When I went to go see this place that they had Ricky in, these aren't halfway houses. These are like little mini prisons that are like just scattered all over our neighborhoods. I mean, this is like a little miniature prison. It was almost like the, like a high school, the size of a high school, with 300 people sleeping there uh, in the, just in the middle of the neighborhood. You know, it's, it's incredible. This is like a whole other scam taking place right under our noses. And all the research shows, I want Ricky to speak to this, just from personal experience, that when you put large populations of people in prison, especially for nonviolent crime, they become colleges of crime. The people now have a record. Now they're part of the criminal underworld, and this creates more and more crime. You know, police always send me emails and say, I'm glad we've got more people in prison than China or the whole EU combined. Well, no, I'm not glad because I know that creates a culture of crime. Ricky. Absolutely. You take young guys that come in prison and, and they only was, you know, buying a thousand dollars worth of drugs. Now he's with a, a kingpin from Colombia or from Mexico or with bank robbers. And these older guys, they, 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 they feed off of these young kids. You know, like for me, I fed off of them too, but I was trying to teach them the things that I've been through. But a lot of times in prison, that doesn't happen. That's why they're so concerned right now with terrorism. Because they know that they give these young kids so much time, Alex. You know, you give a kid 18, 19 years old, 20 years in prison, he's going to be bitter. And that is, and, 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 I'm sorry, and, is, and as we discuss in the, the new film, How Weed Won the West, there's there's a, an incarceration rate that actually the, the government's own research has shown where when we hit a certain level of incarceration, it makes crime rates grow up. Which is then more police to control more people, to make more money, to put more people in the prisons as the military industrial complex absorbs America. Ricky Ross, the naked body scanners, they want to put everybody through at airports recording our naked bodies. I mean, we're all being trained to be prisoners. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and if we don't stop it, Alex, if we don't stop it, we're not going to have any rights. You they can tap our phones now whenever they want to. Uh, your friends can come and record you. I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, what is what is America coming to? Are we becoming a uh, harmony? It's amazing. Ricky, again, how do people support what you're doing with your community programs? Well, they, they can donate money to, uh, to us at FreewayEnterprise.com. They can contact me on there. Uh, I have my own uh, email address. is Rick Ross, R-I-C-K. ROSS 90746 at gmail.com. Uh, I definitely need help because I'm trying to start programs here in South Central for the kids. Uh, I also need help with my traveling. You know, I, I, right now I'm, I'm, I'm putting it out of my check. You know, when I go across, around the country uh, speaking to kids in different schools, we plan on doing a tour here in California where I go to like 20 schools and, you know, just, just educate the kids. And, and I would appreciate any help that I can get. And anybody that would like to volunteer to, to come out to the schools and support uh, would be much appreciated. And you're explaining to children that the drug culture is evil and designed to destroy them, correct? Absolutely, and that just because they feel that they're going against the government by selling drugs is just what the government have in, in mind. You know, they have us thinking that by selling drugs, you're rebelling against the government. But that's exactly what the government wants you to think. It's like a reverse psychology thing that they've done to the kids, because most of the kids that get involved with drugs consider themselves rebels. Absolutely, and, and in truth, you're funding the big banks, and you're allowing them to now have a pretext to control and run your life and Absolutely. destroy your communities. And I'd like Absolutely. to just, and, I, and I've been lucky enough to, to travel with Ricky on at least one of the, the trips that he went to, and I just want to say it's a... Uh, what an incredible effect he has to go to a place like a detention center where you've got a bunch of teenagers who they won't listen to anybody, but when Ricky walks in the room, they definitely all shut up and they, they listen to every word he has to say. And it's uh, really, really uh, uh, quite moving to see it in person. I've got some questions here um, from listeners. Here's a Twitter question, Ricky. What okay. other illegal activities was your CIA supplier involved with to give himself credibility to hook you in. I mean, how do they keep you from knowing it Gun. was the CIA? Gun, hand grenade, automatic, fully automatic weapons, machine guns. So the CIA wasn't just bringing in cocaine, they were bringing in guns. Absolutely. 
Unbelievable. And then the public gets even more scared, and they get to get more police to then control the public. <laughs> and they got all this firepower. <laughs> you know, remember, and then, and then they need more time. Remember, they, they, they increased the minimum mandatory. Well, now we need minimum mandatory so we can put them in prison longer because these guys are more violent than they used to be. Well, you know, that's, gave them gun. that's come out in Florida, the CIA was supplying, and I, and I knew in Texas. But so this CIA handler, and this came out in hearings and in court, folks, was also supplying weapons, which yeah, he was... told them they used to sell me weapons. Didn't they used to have a front as like some sort of car place or something, so some sort of car dealership? They had a car dealership. They had a security uh, uh, thing where they, they did security for different, different people. And, you know, they had a bunch of different fronts. Ricky, uh, so this whole time you were working for them, they kept it secret that, that they were CIA, or did you ever hear that, or did you ever wonder? No, I never knew. I never had a clue. Only thing that I knew, Alex, is that they were fighting a war in their country. I did know that. I knew that much about it. That's what they had told me many times. That's why they stole drugs. Oh, so they admitted to you that they were funding a war in their country. Right. They admitted that. Now, where the war was at, I didn't know that. I didn't know anything about Nicaragua. I knew nothing about Contra, uh, nor the CIA at that time. Did you know how they were getting the drugs into Southern California? Nope. They wouldn't tell me that. Well, you know, he was a racist and a bigot, too. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Gary found uh, uh, found a tape that they had where where he said, just like you said, you know, give it to to the end. You know, nobody cares what happens to him. Yeah, I, believe, I think there's that soundbite of, of him actually in American Drug War where he says, you know, I hate I hate the ends, but uh, they they have a lot they but they deal in cash, so let's let's use them. That's exactly what it, I, I think you hit it right on the head, Kevin. Mm -hmm. And again, folks, you can get American Drug War and How the Weed Won the West at Infowars.com. This film is out. You can get it at half guess. price when you order How Weed Won the West, uh, which comes out in 12 days at Infowars.com. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And Alex, guess what? The courts wouldn't let us play that tape to the jury. They let this guy testify against me and said that that tape had absolutely nothing to do with his testimony. Him saying we're dealing drugs to the N-words. Right. And don't nobody care about them. And that he didn't like them. Because I never heard the tape because the judge wouldn't let us play the tape in court. Well, for 150 years, it's been on record that the prostitution, the gambling, the drug dealing is allowed in the poor areas, especially the black areas. We'll be right back. In two years of his career as one of the biggest drug dealers in U.S. history, Ricky Ross made $500 million, or $500 million conservatively went through his hands. And he was just one of the larger conduits to put it on the street. They only bust the middle size and small drug dealers. 80 plus percent of illegal drug users only use marijuana. If you decriminalize that, it wounds their phony drug war. That the drug cartels controlled by our government are taking over the planet with. If you decriminalize, you shut off the CIA's main funding mechanism and the fake war they're using to take over America. Your comments on that, Ricky Ross? I got like 10 more minutes. Ricky Ross? Oh, he's talking to, he's got guys talking to him in the background. <laughs> uh, Ricky? Yeah. What would it do to the CIA if we decriminalize drugs? Oh, man, it would take a big bite out of their budget. <laughs> you know, they couldn't uh, no longer raise funds that uh, Congress and, and the rest of the country knows about. You know, uh, with, with, with illegal drugs, they can get money that's non-traceable. You know, nobody knows where it comes from. Nobody knows that this person was paid off or that person was paid off. You know, it's just free money. Three so, weeks ago, Ron Paul gave a speech documenting that the CIA has had a coup in America and already runs our country. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt that. I, I, I believe that, that that's probably true. I mean, because the people are not standing up, you know. And until the people take charge, you know, somebody's going to run it. And you know, the people with money, you know, that's what they want money for to run. But it's so obvious that criminal elements in government made drugs illegal because their alcohol prohibition had ended, and they wanted a new black market to take over with. 
I agree. I totally agree with that. And and drugs was a perfect uh, venue for that. And we're now 70-plus years into the drug war, and the bigger the drug war gets, Ricky, the more drugs we got on the street. Why is that? Well, I mean, it's like this here, Alex. There's no way that, that they can win this drug war. Drugs... If somebody wants to get high, Alex, they're going to get high. You know, a guy OD'd, when I was in the hole at a maximum security prison, a guy OD'd in the hole. He's in a cell by himself, no other inmate contact. How did this happen? How could he be in the hole and OD'd? The jail guards are selling him the drugs. Exactly. Somebody's going to get it to him. And usually it's the people of authority. Which is why they want to keep it illegal, and they want to get... 50% of kids, according to the New Freedom Initiative, on Prozac and Ritalin, which are even more dangerous than other narcotics.